Well, good morning. Welcome to Morning Brew with Pastor Drew. I'm Drew McComb, the pastor here at the famous Little Brown Church that's located in Nashua, Iowa. Also a pastor church called St. John's at Pleasant Hill, just outside of the town, the beautiful Iowa countryside. And we have our ministry outreach center called Compass Outreach Center that's right in the middle of Nashua, uh, which is a town of about 1,500 people right here in the northeast corner of Iowa. Uh, thanks for tuning in. First of all, I just wanted to say to you, uh, thank you for your prayers. It's been a few weeks since I've been on the air. I actually contracted RSV. Uh, wasn't bronchitis after all, RSV, and got pretty sick. And I was in Denver, Colorado to do a wedding. So on top of the RSV, I had altitude, and then I produced... Uh, pretty high blood pressure, so I'm in some medications to deal with all of that. And uh, I really appreciate your uh, your prayers and those who said so on our Facebook page. Voice isn't totally back yet, but we're going to have a go and see how we do uh, this particular week. So as we say every time, all you need for a broadcast is your Bible, whatever translation you particularly have, an open heart and mind to hear the word of the Lord, and a good cup of coffee, which I've uh, just had. I'm now on decaf with no sugar at all. I watched my uh, intake, so I uh, had to change my diet and uh, exercise program pretty significantly to deal with all these challenges. And we are heading, a group of us, 34, are heading to Scotland on April the 1st through the 11th, so we've got to be kind of healthy for that. And uh, I'm looking forward to being there back in my old home country with uh, my friends uh, from uh, Iowa and different parts of the States and Texas and Virginia and different places. And we're going to make that tour and hopefully see some of my old friends back in uh, my old church back in Scotland. Um, if you want to share the broadcast, if you ever want to do that with your family and friends on Facebook, then I would encourage you to press on the share button that's close to the screen you're looking at or do it the old-fashioned way, give them a call, um, send them a letter. Um, you know, the new way is to do texting and messaging, whatever way you choose. It would be great to, uh, to increase our, our visiting uh, audience. So when I left, we just did a Monday broadcast and I wanted to talk to you about the cross and the resurrection because after all, we are heading towards Easter time, rapidly heading towards Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. We're right in the middle of Lent. And so I wanted to talk about the cross and uh, the centrality of the cross to the Christian faith and the centrality of the resurrection. If there's anything that I would encourage you to study it would be about the cross. One of the greatest books that's ever been written about that wonderful theme uh, was by John R. W. Stott, uh, S-T-O-T-T. That's called The Cross of Christ. And if you're going to buy something, buy a book to read, then I would really encourage you to buy that book. You can get it very cheaply on eBay if you don't mind having secondhand books. And The, the Cross of Christ by John R. W. Stott, great uh, Bible teacher and theologian and pastor. Um, so we're talking about the cross and the, re and the resurrection, also kind of looking at why there is so much apathy within our nation and sometimes even within the church with regards to these great themes of our faith. Um, it's hard sometimes to find churches these days that want to preach the cross. Paul made it the central part of his message. He said, I, we preach Christ crucified. That's the message. That's the message of the gospel without what Jesus did on the cross for our sins, there is no salvation. Uh, there is no hope of eternity. And so it's important that we understand the importance of the cross. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, verse 18, Paul writes these words. He says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. Let me read that again. For the message of the cross, the preaching of the cross, is foolishness to those who are perishing. A lot of people just blow it off. They're not interested at all. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And so what Paul is saying here is that without the presence of the Holy Spirit living within a man's heart, unregenerate people, unsaved people, are, are incapable of understanding spiritual things, the things of God. Unless there's a change in the condition of the human heart, man has a debilitating incapacity he just can't discern the things of God. And for him, the extent of his appreciation of the cross can, can only reach to wonder and speculation. Uh, an unsaved, unregenerate person can look at the cross, what happened there, be somewhat touched by it, but not, not gain a true understanding of what happened there or have a resultant spiritual change. Mahatma Gandhi said these words. He said, I could accept Christ 
a Jesus as a martyr, as an embodiment of sacrifice, and as a divine teacher, but not as the most perfect man ever born. He wrote, His death on the cross was a great example to the world, but that there was anything like a mysterious or miraculous virtue in it, my heart could not accept. And so we're going to talk a little bit this week about how believers, not unbelievers, not someone like Gandhi, uh, how believers, supposed believers in Christ, can be apathetic about the message of the cross. How does that happen? And how can we avoid that happening in our own lives so that when we come to Easter time and Good Friday, we understand uh, what not only what happened there at the cross, but understand the implications of what happened on the cross to us as individual people, and that we can rejoice and celebrate Easter with much more certainty, with a clearer understanding of what Jesus did there and what it means to us. So that's where we're going for the rest of this week. I think it'll be illuminating and helpful. And once again, thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for me uh, that my, my strength and my health continues to improve. So God bless you. I love you. And thank you for being part of Morning Brew. God bless. Bye-bye.